So 2022 has been wrapped up for several weeks, and now I'm finally getting to my top 15 movies of 2022. Why did I expend it to top 15 this year? Well, that was due to the bottom list, and we'll get to that, and we'll get to that probably tomorrow. But considering I did 15 there, I kind of had to do 15 here, so the list is a little kind of stretching it, especially with the honorable mentions. <sighs> Uh, my sinuses are acting up too, so that's why my if my my I don't know if my voice sounds weird from I don't know if the mic's picking up my but my voice sounds a little weird. So yeah, my sinuses are not in the best shape today. So so but yeah, let's uh, just get into it. So first off, I'm throwing in the honorable mentions. Enola Holmes two, a fun enough movie until the last thirty minutes where everything went downhill, and that was the point where I kind of had to start stretching it a bit. Pinocchio, an interesting retelling, if nothing else, but just really wasn't entirely my thing. Minions, The Rise of Gru, much better than the first one, I will give it that, but it just didn't quite make the list. Mortal Kombat Legends, Snowblind, a fun, turn-your-brain-off action movie, but nothing more than that. And The Bad Guys, the first attempt by DreamWorks this year was a decent enough effort, but just barely missed the list. That all out of the way, let's get into the top 15 movies of 2022. Did this one make the list purely by default? Kinda, but I still did really enjoy the movie. Yes, the comedy wasn't very well done, and the movie was ridiculously short, but it did have a lot of good elements to it. Christian Bale was not only very was not only very fun, but also very intimidating as Gore the God Butcher, and the action sequences were a lot of fun. Ironically, the biggest problem with this movie is that there wasn't enough of it. The first of what I will be referring to as the Daily Wire trilogy for the rest of the video was a decent enough effort. I like the concept of this movie, and all of the acting was surprisingly stellar, but I think the pacing could have used some work. I think this would have worked better as a 45-minute short film, since it did have a tendency to drag. And there were some weird religious undertones and some kind of religious message that weren't explained very well. But other than that, I thought this movie was a decent enough thriller. I need somebody to explain it to me like I'm five. Why was this movie good? If you didn't see my review, I just assumed this was just going to be another secret magic control agency, just some dumbass kids movie. But of all of the animated movies they put out, why is this one of the few that got effort put into it? The animation looks pretty good, the action sequences are fun, the voice acting is good, and despite the plot being stupid in concept, they handled it surprisingly well. Honestly, this was a better Uncharted adaptation than the actual Uncharted movie. Well, this was definitely a surprise. As I didn't review the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie because it came out a few months before I started making videos, but if you saw my worst of 2020, well... I think it speaks for itself. I thought the movie was terrible. It wasn't funny, wasn't interesting, wasn't enjoyable. But the second movie was everything the first movie should have been. The action sequences are a lot better. The jokes are better written. Uh, Idris Elba was a, was a definitely positive addition as Knuckles. If it weren't for that really bad 10-minute sequence that featured no Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, or Robotnik, I think this might have actually been higher on the list. Hear me out. No, this movie, I get that this movie was meme to hell and back. I know critics ripped it apart, and I know it bombed to the box office twice, which is pretty impressive, might I add. But does that all amount to a, does that necessarily mean it's a bad movie? I mean, the special effects are nothing special, but they're not terrible. Jared Leto surprisingly puts in probably the only good performance of his career. Matt Smith is a lot of fun as the villain, and I was actually pretty engaged with the story. The end credit scenes were garbage, but other th but up till that point, I thought the movie was decent. Sue me. When I first reviewed this movie, I gave it an A+. That was a mistake. 
Now, obviously, I still like the movie, but it is not A-plus worthy. The time travel stuff doesn't really make much sense, and the special effects are not very good, especially D.H. Catherine Keener. I don't know how I gave that a pass when I first saw it. But the performances were pretty good, and the action sequences were a lot of fun, and I like the concept of this movie, even if it doesn't really make that much sense. So, it, yeah, it's still fun. I just wish the writing backed it up a bit more. Had this not been an allegory for white colonization and been about half an hour shorter, this probably would have been higher on the list. But those, but those problems cannot be ignored. But this was definitely, while it wasn't as good as the first movie, it did have some solid action sequences, better special effects than the first movie, so at least we have that. And the performances were top tier. Hell, Angela Bassett was the first MCU actor to win a Golden Globe, which is bullshit. How is she the first one? But... I digress. So this is this was definitely a good closer for Phase 4, even though technically the Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special was a closer for Phase 4, and I'm looking forward to Phase 5. This is the Daily Wire movie I was looking forward to the most, for obvious reasons, because it has Gina Carano. And she's definitely good as the lead, and Nick Searcy makes a pretty good antagonist. And, again, westerns aren't really my thing. I know a lot of people love westerns, and saying it's not your thing is sacrilege to some people. But I stand by it, it's just not my genre. But I do acknowledge when one is good. My only problem with this movie is, where the hell is the musical score? Seriously, how'd they let that slide? I repeat... Of all the Netflix animated movies, why was this one and Chicken Hair the ones that got the most effort? I mean, Troll Hunters Rise of the Titans obviously got effort, but that was Guillermo del Toro. That was going to get effort regardless. How did this turn out as good as it did? Now, I saw the reviews. I saw everybody was just like, oh, it's not. I just even saw some people saying it's close to unwatchable. That was a load of bullshit, clearly. Oh, my God. The visuals for this were outstanding. Like, again, the first 30 minutes were kind of... Uh, they weren't gr they weren't terrible, but they weren't great. But the second Jacob Marley showed up, the movie kicked itself in the high gear. The visuals were super creative and a lot of fun to watch. The songs were, got a lot better about halfway through. All the voice acting is stellar. And I like the changes this movie made to the source material. I was glad it wasn't just a line-by-line a -line retelling like a lot of other ones were. Now... The Muppets are, is still going to be my Christmas Carol, but I will definitely be watching this every Christmas. I'm putting it on the list for next year. A Viking version of The Lion King. Sign me up. Now, I, I, I know like, it's technically based on Hamlet and so was Lion King, but honestly, Lion King is more popular than most Shakespeare's work nowadays. Oh, that hurt to say. But, it's, sadly, it's true, but... But I digress, this was still a well-written movie. Even it, it did kind of notice the similarities between Lion King because it's based on the same source material. But I like that this movie did its own thing. The performances, especially out of Skarsgård and Anya Taylor-Joy and Nicole Kidman were very well done. The villain was surprisingly interesting, like probably even more interesting than Scar. Or the action sequences were really cool, and I like that Robert Egger actually... Like, he went away from what he usually does. This is not his usual kind of movie. So, I like that he's branching out and did a very good job with this movie. The movie the liberal media does not want you to see. That's how this movie was advertised, and it turns out they were right. Well, this is definitely a low-budget movie out of Breitbart. I feel like the low budget actually works to the film's advantage, showing kind of a shady part of the world, so I think the lower budget quality actually kind of works to the film's advantage. The performances, especially out of Lawrence Fox, Gina Carano, and John James, are all outstanding. The movie is very well paced and put together, and like I said, mainstream media clearly does not want you to see this movie because, much like a lot of Daily Wire content, I'm guaranteeing most of them didn't even actually watch the movie. And I've seen the reviews, and not a single one of them actually critiques the movie. They just critique it for being, um, it just critiques it for exposing liberal nonsense. And it's especially funny how this movie's mostly been proven right. Oopsie. The Daily Wire has a better superhero movie than DC. Let that sink in. I didn't have a ton of hype for this movie. I mean, I was going to watch it anyway. 
But I'll be damned, this was a lot better than I was expecting. Like, the plot, the acting from everybody, especially Carrie Always, is outstanding. I like the one action sequence it had, it uses its visuals very creatively. The editing is some next level stuff, like, I love the transitions for this movie. And I do have a little bit of bias for this, because, fun fact, the cinematographer for the movie, Jason Ball, actually saw my review. So that's pretty cool. Damn! I didn't really care that much for the first Top Gun. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but I just don't really care much about it. This sequel was so much better than I was expecting. When I saw the trailer, I thought, okay, I don't really have a ton of interest in this. But, of course, when I saw the liberal media melting down about it, I, of course, had to watch it. And I had so much fun with this movie. This is better than the first movie in pretty much every conceivable way. And this is not the last time I'll be saying that on this list, despite the fact we only have two left. The MCU came into 2022 swinging. After a really strong 2021 with four movies I really enjoyed, all of which made the list, the top 10, not even the top 15 like I have here, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness really kicked things up with their with how they're handling the multiverse. I do think they could have done a bit more with it, and I think the Illuminati could have been handled a bit better. But this movie was fantastic. I like all the multiversal content, especially how they handle dreams in this. The action sequences are fun. The acting is, of course, stellar out of most of the cast. And I'm really looking forward to where they go from here. Yes, really. Puss in Boots 2 is the best movie of 2022. How the hell did this happen? I mean, similar to Top Gun Maverick, this movie took a relatively average movie and made a sequel that's better in every conceivable way. The villains for this movie are all very different, and the, especially Death, they did not have to go that hard with the villain. They give Puss so much more character in this movie than they did in the first movie. All the side characters are fun, I especially like the dog he, he travels with. The action sequences are amazing. The the score is is outstanding, and the visuals are just out again outstanding. And I, and this movie teases a Shrek Five, and apparently Antonio Banderas also teased a Shrek Five. So we'll see where this franchise goes from here. I cannot believe how much I love this movie. This is probably my favorite DreamWorks movie, and that is pretty impressive. So that about wraps it up for 2022. Well, for the best list. Next time we'll get into the worst list. And so, yeah, that's all I got for this. Thank y'all so much for watching. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think your top 10 or 15 or whatever you want to put in the comments was. Uh, was there any movies I, you think I missed? Because if I didn't review the movie, I didn't see it. So I'm going to put that up right off the bat. If you're going to tell me you missed this, you missed that. If I didn't review it, I didn't see it. So, so yeah. As for, and if I didn't have a review of it, check the Everything I Missed video. So, yeah, that's all I got for this. And I will see y'all in the worst video. Bye.